It's Thursday morning, I need to get the dogs out for some exercise and enrichment, and I don't have a whole lot of time to provide both today. So I'm gonna be taking you through how to add enrichment to your walks with your dogs so you can kind of kill two birds with one stone that way. The very first thing that I'm going to do, because it is the morning still, is I'm gonna actually exercise Fen prior to going on our walk. This sounds kind of counterintuitive, but since it's the morning, he hasn't really run around too much. He's been playing with Wrigley for the last hour. I don't expect him to expend his energy on a six foot leash. It's just gonna cause him to pull a whole lot, um, which is something that I don't want either as a behavior and for him to practice. So exercising him a little bit beforehand is just gonna help take the edge off whenever we go to the park and I want him to kind of walk nicely ish on a six foot leash, getting them a little bit tired beforehand is advantageous. All right, we just got to the park. Another tip for having a successful walk is decide on your rules. So um, I say rules more like guidelines for yourself at the start of your walk. You're gonna wanna let your dog um, explore a little bit before you ask for full attention if that's what your walks look like if that's what you want um, my rules for my dogs are manners getting out of the car they can't just jump right out of the car whenever I open the doors and they can't rip my arms out whenever we start going however I'm not going to start asking them for behaviors challenging or easy um, until about like 10 minutes into the walk because I think it's fair to give them that opportunity to sniff, to explore, um, to get those initial things out. So um, on that note as well, I brought different treats with me. I recommend bringing treats on your walk for a variety of different reasons, but you can do training as one of your enrichment activities on your walk. I've got chicken right here for Fen. I've got cheese right here for Wrigley. I needed a high value treat for her because other dogs right now are a little challenging for her. And then I've also got cut up Happy Howie's um, soft meat roll treats. These are gonna be great for treat scatters in the grass, which is gonna be one of the things that we'll do. This other stuff, chicken is Fen's high value treat, but the both dogs like this stuff. So if we come across hard situations, I'm gonna break out the high value food um, for treat scatters and little tricks, behaviors here and there. We're gonna use Happy Howie's stuff. Um, so bring treats along with you. That's what I brought today and we're gonna get the dogs out. Wait, uh-uh, wait. Free. Oh boy, all done. All done, Meeks. Good girl, all done. Good, let's go. All right, my first tip as we're out here is let your dog sniff. I've talked a lot about this on my channel, but Letting your dog sniff is letting them use their brains whenever they're out here. Whenever they're sniffing, they're using their brains. So mentally tiring them out as well as physically tiring them out is a big part of what you can incorporate on your daily walks with your dogs. If you can stop and let them sniff, um, depending on what your walk looks like, it doesn't have to be forever. You can let your dog stop and sniff for 10, 20 seconds, and then you cue a let's go and you move on. You can make it what you want to make it, but if you do let your dog sniff, they're going to get a lot more tired. And especially when we're talking about these two crazy high energy little dude, come on, that I could never physically tire out. That makes the biggest difference when it comes to actually walking them is letting your dog sniff. My dogs actually get tired from their walks because I'm incorporating physical activity and mental enrichment as well. But already, Fen is doing a whole lot better on leash than he normally would if I didn't exercise him and let him run beforehand. So, if you've got a high energy dog like this, <laughs> very high, high drive, um, definitely exercise beforehand however you see fit, and we're gonna poop. Next tip, which should have been the first tip, walk your dogs if you can in a different location. Nearby park, I actually come to this park quite frequently, but there's always different smells um, and we do it in different ways. Like I said, sometimes the dogs are on long lines. Um, whenever they're on long lines, I walk them individually, but there's always new sniffs. There's, you know, 
going a different route on your neighborhood walk, if you have a park nearby, giving your dog basically a different set of smells and a different scenery to look at. Great, easy way to add some enrichment into their walks that is just changing things up slightly. Go hop up. Yes. Jumping. All right, so we are now almost 15 minutes in to the walk. They're starting to settle in. Um, and up until this point, I'm just reinforcing those rules that I set at the beginning that I talked about in the car, working on loose leash walking with Fen, essentially. Wrigley is just, you can't have chicken, sorry. Wrigley is just here for the ride. Um, but at this point in the walk, I'll start asking them for small behaviors like this asking them to stop, maybe station on something, once I see them actually start to settle in the walk. At this point, you could reward for check-ins, taking them through different distractions, whatnot. Free, all done. Good job. And then we go back to walking again. All right, let's go. Good job. Well done. All right, we do have a dog coming up that's running. Come on this way, over here, up, up, up. Ooh, right here. Good job. We've worked on this as a skill. Good job, Fenny. Well done. There's a dog that went over there that was running. Nice. Well done. Good job, guys. Free. All done. Well done. Yeah, they go both way. Well done. Well done. Awesome. Training is my favorite form of enrichment, and it's very easy to incorporate into your walks. You just have to know how to do it, when to do it. Um, don't do it during the first 10 or 15 minutes of your walk. Your dog is not going to be able to give you very much attention, especially if you're doing this for the very first time. They're not going to give you any of their attention. Bring high value food with you. Sniffs are hard to compete with. So like I said, I brought chicken for Fen and I brought cheese for Wrigley. And I've also got some medium value treats as well. But start with check-ins. If your dog looks at you, mark and reinforce them really highly for that. Give them five or six treats in a row just for checking in with you. Your dog's gonna be like, whoa, that was super cool. I wanna do that again, that paid off really well for me. Then you can start to ask for more what I call like expensive behaviors, things that are harder for your dogs to do. Um, and that harder thing might just be sit. It might be sit, it might be like Fen likes to offer his one up, his one paw up cue. Oh, we got our tail in there, there we go. Um, he really likes that as a behavior. Yes, good girl. We can ask for that pretty much anywhere at this point, but it started with just reinforcing little paw lifts and little check-ins here and there. If you've never done this before, it's going to be challenging for your dogs. All done. Let's go. So make it easy. Don't ask for too much. Um, I'd say you get one behavior, reinforce it really, really highly if your dog will take food. If your dog will not take food, reinforce it by them getting to move. Let's go this way. Come on by them getting to move forwards again. Um, we gotta figure out what our dogs like in this environment. If it's not food, maybe it's toys, maybe it's access to sniffing again. Figure out what your dog enjoys and reinforce them with what they want in this situation. And don't ask for too much. One thing and then walk for another five or 10 minutes. If your dog checks in with you on their own, great, take it but wait to ask for another behavior. And then as they get better with this, you're gonna be able to ask for more and more. Okay, we've made it to our next tip. If you have an open soccer field like this, and you have a very toy motivated dog, I'm not gonna do it with Fen today, but this is who that applies to directly. Um, play fetch, play tug, play with toys in this field. You could um, bring along a long line. If your dog isn't already on one, you could strap it around um, your shoulder so it hangs down on your walks. That's sometimes what I'll do is carry long lines like that. Put your dog on a long line and play fetch. Incorporate some exciting ball time um, or tug or whatever it might be into your walks. 
if you have access to an open field like this with nobody else in it. That's a really good form of enrichment. And if you also are asking for behaviors from your dog in order to gain access to the ball, to the tug, whatever it might be, you're also incorporating training into that game too, and they're in a novel location. This is a great activity to do. What you can also do with the non-toy motivated dogs in the field is I like to do treat scatters here as well. So that's actually what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take a little bit of a chill break. This is about, I'd say halfway through our walk, we're about 30 minutes in. So I'm just gonna take a handful of treats, Wrigley and toss them in the grass for my dogs to sniff out. They're using their nose in this moment. If anything exciting happened on your walk, fun. If anything relatively exciting happened on your walk for Wrigley, stress of seeing other dogs and working through seeing other dogs right now is stressful for her. Um, this is a great activity to help center your dog and calm them back down again. It's a great activity to do post fetch session as well to calm your dog down. Um, and Fen finished his little treat scatter and he's lying down. Um, taking a break and hanging out and chilling like this is also a good thing to incorporate. I tend to incorporate it about halfway through my walk. We'll sit, I'll pick a spot and we'll sit for a minute. Wrigley actually has a much harder time with this because she's very food motivated. She's not relaxing right now, she's offering behavior. Fen is actually relaxing. Now he's offering behavior. But this is something good to practice. You could also stop and do a five minute training session here if you're at that point with your dogs. But just sitting here and again, handful of treats, Wrigley, tossing the treats out as a treat scatter fen for your dogs to find in the grass. Really easy way to add enrichment to your walks. And back to sniffing. Okay, so now we're by the frisbee field, which is where Fen's gonna have a harder time focusing. So I'm gonna ask for easier things all along here. Wait! Nice job, Fan. Wrigley, sit. Good girl. Touch. Yes. Fan, can I get one? <laughs> Find it, buddy. So, situation where he doesn't care about the food anymore, which is fine. Can I get a touch? Touch. Good. Wrigley, down. Good girl. Nice job. Sit. Good. Down. Good. Sit. Good job. So I'll do a little with Wrigley. And then here is where I have different reinforcement. Then watch me. <laughs> Go cool body. Nice job. Ball reinforcer is better in this circumstance. Can I get one? Good. So again, knowing what reinforcer is exciting to your dogs in the moment. And it changed as soon as Frisbee over here was introduced. Can I get a touch? Good. Good job. All right, all done. Free. Let's go. Good girl. Clean up his mess. Watch me. Good. Good boy. Are you going to hold on to it? You want me to hold on to it? Right. Nice job. Let's go. Easy, easy. Foot's all sorts of caught up. There you go. Good job. 
Okay, and we're back at the car, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of a lot. To, I needed a third arm <laughs> that entire way. But we've got 45-minute 45, 45 walk, um, plus the 15, 10, 15 minutes I did at home um, playing fetch with Fen in the backyard. An hour of my time. Um, this park is two minutes from my house, so like an hour and four minutes of my time. Um, and my dogs are going to be really tired for the next while. So that's great. If you are able to put some of these elements, you definitely don't have to incorporate all of the elements, but if you're able to incorporate a few of them, it really is going to make the difference on your walks. Um, so now you kind of understand what I mean whenever I'm talking about doing enrichment, um, incorporating enrichment and training out on your walks with your dogs. It gets them twice as tired. I hope this was helpful for all of you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. This is just what I do with these two, um, plus a few extra tips here and there. But um, yeah, let me know if you have questions or um, think of another form of enrichment that you are adding into your walks. This is just what works for my dogs and the majority of um, clients that I work with. But have fun with it, get creative, and I'll see you guys in our next video.